For those of you who have been following me for any amount of time, you know that I've been on a browser journey of sorts over the last couple of years. I've pretty much tried all the browsers out there. I've switched back and forth between Firefox and Chrome and Ungoogle Chromium and Brave and Vivaldi. And I mean, I've tried them all and I almost always come back to Firefox for many good reasons. And to me, while Firefox has its problems, that's for sure, and I'm not entirely sure that Mozilla is my favorite company, I do think that Firefox is overall the absolute best browser on the market. Now, obviously the market share numbers do not back this up, so this is a personal opinion, but I really do think that everyone should at least try to use Firefox. So what I thought I'd do today is talk about five reasons why everyone should use Firefox. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the first reason is probably the least important reason, and that is that it's open source. Now, I know what you're thinking, Matt. You're an open source advocate, and you think that Firefox being open source is the least important reason to use it? Yeah, because most people don't care that it's going to be open source. When they use a browser, all they care about is does it browse the web, and does it do it well? That's all they care about. If both of those things were false, then they would use something different. So they honestly aren't going to care that this thing happens to have code that you can fork and make your own or a code base that you can contribute to, whatever that is. They don't, most people don't care. However, just because that's true doesn't mean that it's not important. So when it comes to your ability to trust that your browser is safe, secure, and well-developed, the open nature of Firefox means that you can trust that a little bit more than you can if you use something that is based on proprietary software, something like Google Chrome. Now, Google Chrome is technically based on open source software, but Chromium, for all intents and purposes, must might as well be ran by Google. So if you absolutely trust Google, then you're not going to have any problems with this. But because Firefox is open source, there are at least developers out there who can search through the code base and make sure nothing nefarious is going on, whereas that opportunity doesn't even exist when it comes to things like the proprietary parts of Google Chrome. Being open source also enables developers to take Firefox and fork it and make other browsers like LibreWolf that offer extra privacy features. So that is also a good thing and is only possible because Firefox is open source. So moving on to the second one. The second one is customizability. So I've talked about this many times on my channel before, but Firefox allows you to customize basically everything, not only in settings, but also the Chrome or the parts of the browser that go around it. So you can do something like I've done here, where I have the URL bar and the tabs all in one line, and I have the my bookmarks here along the side. Now, this is done through something called userchrome.css. I've made a couple of videos about that. I'll link those in either in the cards or in the video description. It's fairly easy, but it's the only browser that, let, that lets you do this. This customizability is one of the main reasons why I keep coming back to Firefox despite everything else because I like customizing my browser and this is the only one that allows me to do it to this extent. So. The customizability of Firefox is actually really good, and it's one of the things that makes me most happy to use Firefox. The third reason why everyone should try Firefox is the privacy and security. Now, I will not claim that Firefox is the most secure, privacy-respecting browser out there on the market. That is absolutely not true, because by default, Mozilla actually does collect telemetry. So that is something that you need to keep in mind if you're going to use this. It can be disabled. And because it's open source, people can actually look at the code and make sure it's actually being disabled. But it's still something that you need to keep in mind when you use Firefox. Outside of that, however, Firefox does offer a lot more in terms of customizability when it comes to protecting your privacy. So it offers different modes that you can use to tweak your performance and privacy settings all the way across the browser. Or you can go through and customize each and every little setting so that you can have full control over what is done in Firefox. So it also helps to prevent things like trackers, things like phishing and stuff like that. And while I won't say that Chrome is horrible at this because they do actually have some privacy features inside Chrome, I will say that I trust Mozilla and Firefox to actually turn this stuff off if I turn it off. Whereas I'm not sure I actually trust Google to do that because they obviously want my data as much as possible. Whereas Mozilla has no interest in collecting your data 
whatsoever outside of that telemetry. They never, they're not going to sell it to anybody. So that is the third reason. Now, number four on the list is going to be something that is very niche. And it's only going to apply to a small portion of people, but really, I've found the extension support in Firefox to be fantastic. And there are some things here that are exclusives that you're not going to find on Chrome or Chromium-based websites. Things like Vim Vixen is here. I think Vim Vixen is probably the best Vim-based browser plugin that you can find. Uh, there's another one that I use every day called Simple Tab Groups. It's this thing right here. And while Chromium does have tab groups built in, it's not as good as this, I don't think. So, so basically what Simple Tab Groups does is it allows you to group your tabs into categories and then only display certain categories. So right now, I could be displaying the main group or whatever. And that just has those four tabs in it. And if I want to switch to a different category I just click on one of these so like this here I can do that it's as easy as just changing categories so I love tab groups and I like the way Firefox does them at least through a, an extension than the way Chrome does theirs built in the fifth reason is one that is kind of iffy but it's some definitely something that I've noticed and the reason why I say it's iffy is because it's really going to depend on how you use your browser so for me personally Firefox uses less memory than Chrome. It just always has, and it still remains true to this day. I don't know that that's going to be the same for everyone, but I've seen other accounts online where people also say that Firefox uses less RAM. And this is important because browsers are notorious for taking up a lot of resources, and usually the resource that is going to be the most precious when it comes to browsing is going to be the amount of RAM that you have. So the fact that Firefox uses less is a good thing. Now, like I said, it's going to depend on how you use your browser. If you have like 100 YouTube tabs open, your browser is going to take up a lot of memory no matter what browser you're using. So if that's how you use your browser, don't expect to use a, you know very small amounts of RAM. The one place that Firefox kind of falls down, and I'm not sure how this compares to Firefox, or how it compares to Chrome, rather, is that it spawns a ton of processes. So, at one point, I think mine was running like 200 processes, and that which is just nuts. It's not even like a process per tab or whatever, because I, I did not have that many tabs open. But... It does seem to spawn a lot of processes, and that is a little weird, but I, like I said, I don't know how that compares to Chrome. Just to add a couple bonuses on here, Firefox is not slow, so anybody who tells you, well, you should just use Chrome because it's the fastest browser, I don't think is actually true. I've never had any problems with Firefox being slow, so that is definitely not something that should bother you too much unless your internet is like super slow for some reason, or perhaps all you use is Google Sites where they perhaps slow their websites down in other browsers that aren't their own. If that's the case, then you should just not use Google services unless you absolutely have to. I think that's probably a good rule, but you use what you have to to do the job, I suppose. So those are the five reasons why I think everyone should try Firefox. There are probably other reasons out there that I just didn't think of or didn't fit in the video. If you have other reasons why people should use Firefox or reasons why they shouldn't use Firefox, leave, th leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing people. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere close to where it is right now. So I thank you so very much for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.